Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Diana Klink, and on behalf of the City of Suffolk and the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce, thank you so very much for joining us today. I would like to ask that everyone please stand for the presentation of colors by the Suffolk Public Safety Honor Guard and remain standing for the national anthem performed by Haley Madry, a junior at Nansman River High School. You may be seated. Thank you, Haley. Just to let everybody know what, what talented youth we have here in our city of Suffolk, uh, Haley actually performed recently at Carnegie Hall. So let's please give her a round of applause. I would like to welcome to the podium at this time Betty Kadyer, Suffolk Division Chair of the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Diana, members of the Honor Guard, and Ms. Madry uh, for that exceptional performance of the National Anthem. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Betty Kadire, and it's my distinct pleasure as the 2004 Chair of the Suffolk Division of the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce to welcome you to the final State of the City program. The Chamber has seen outstanding attendance as well as fabulous presentations from the area's mayors this year. We are sure that Suffolk will not disappoint because we have a hard-earned reputation as a first-class city on the move. And this competitive um, and challenging world, we are making moves. By being the final luncheon, we hope um, that we can boast that we have saved the best for last.
Before I start the program and make introductions, I would like to just acknowledge the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce and to just thank them for the great job that they've been doing in Hampton Roads for businesses, whether large businesses or small businesses. Um, they look out for the business interest, with, not only with the General Assembly, but by providing professional networking opportunities, as well as first class professional development and educational programs. The Chamber's engaged in the challenges and opportunities facing us all as business folks in the community. I strongly urge you to attend our monthly membership meetings. We have one coming up May 20th uh, at 8 a.m. We also have a very special networking coming up. It will be May 29th. It's called our Mingle on Main Street. It's at the Pavilion Visitor Center right across the street. Always a lot of fun, good opportunity to meet new people, and also to promote your business. If you are, um, the Chamber's tweeting today, by the way, and you can follow us on Twitter at Chamber757, and if you are, use the hashtag Suffolk SOC. Now I'd like to introduce the distinguished people at the head table. From my right, your left, Brian Stevens is the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. Brian is new to the Hampton Roads Chamber. He's been with us about six months, but he's embraced the challenges and the vision of the Chamber. His vision is to grow and improve and also improve our region's economy. I know he welcomes all our input and guidance. And next to Brian is Joe Witt, Senior Executive Vice President of Old Point National Bank and the 2014 Treasurer of the Chamber. And seated next to Joe is Tom Prevett. He's the Director of Advocacy and Community Relations for Bon Secours Hampton Roads Health Systems and our gracious platinum sponsor. And next to Tom is Selena Cuffey Glenn, our city manager, Ms. Diana Klink, director of media and community relations with the city. And I, just by the way, Diana, I wanna say thank you. I think the room looks gorgeous. Lots of color and should keep us all awake. Nice you. job. Next is Dawn Glenn, President of Town Bank Suffolk and our generous presenting sponsor for today's luncheon. Next to Dawn is the Honorable Mayor Linda Johnson. And next to her is the Honorable Vice Mayor Charles Brown. And next to Vice Mayor Brown is the Reverend Michael Haley, the pastor for Suffolk Christian Church and I believe I mispronounced that. I think it's Holly. Uh, forgive me. As always, we're delighted to have members of the Suffolk City Council with us today. If you'd please stand, um, I'd like to ask everyone to kind of hold their applause until I finish recognizing all of our VIPs. So as I call your name, if you'll just stand. Um, Councilman Roger Fawcett, Councilman Charles Parr, Councilman Curtis Miltier, Councilman Jeff Grady, Gardy, sorry, Councilman Lou Ward, Councilman Mike Duman. Also, we have with us today representing Suffolk, the Suffolk Public School Board, Linda Bouchard, Enoch Copeland, and Phyllis Byron. Uh, from our constitutional offices, we have Sheriff Raleigh um, Isaacs, uh, Treasurer Ron Williams, Clerk of the Court Randy Carter, Commonwealth Attorney Phil Ferguson, and Commissioner of the Re Revenue Thomas Hazelwood. 
From the General Assembly, we're delighted to have Delegate Chris Jones, Senator Cosgrove, Thank you all. From the city of Portsmouth, we're delighted to have uh, Mayor Kenny Wright and Councilman Bill Moody. From the city of Hampton, um, Councilman Chris Stewart. From the Hampton Roads Economic Development Alliance, Daryl Gosnell. And from the Hampton Roads Military Facilities Alliance, Craig Quigley. Also, we'd like to recognize our city manager, Selena Cuffey Glenn, and her hard working, dedicated staff. If you all would all stand, maybe it is time to do a few applause. Thank all of you for your work and your services to the city of Suffolk. Before I turn the podium over to um, Reverend Holly, we want to recognize our generous sponsors without whom events such as these would not be possible. Our series presenting sponsor, Town Bank, the platinum sponsor, Bon Secours, Virginia Health Systems, the series silver sponsors, Farm Fresh and Optima Health. Is Farm Fresh and Optima out there? You there? Right there we are. Um, and then all of our table sponsors, uh, please look at the table sponsors on the back of your program uh, so you can thank them as well. Again, thank you all for your support and for all of you for coming today. Let's give all of our folks a big hand. And Reverend Haley, I'd like you to um, assist me by providing our invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God of your divine wisdom, you ordained the governments of humankind that we may live in peace and safety and pursue the life the liberty and the happiness to which we all attain. We thank you for our fair city and we thank you for all who labor tirelessly to see that our noble and worthy goals will be achieved. Bless this gathering today, O oh God, and bless the food which we will be privileged to enjoy. Keep us ever mindful of the blessings of the bounty which surrounds us and we pray that these blessings will be freely shared with all people. As your humble servants, O oh God, we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Haley. Everybody enjoy your lunch today. Um, again, I want to remind you that the menu was selected in accordance uh, with the mission of Healthy People, Healthy Suffolk Initiative. Have a good meal. Enjoy it. Good afternoon, Suffolk. It's wonderful to be here in my hometown with all of you today. Um, one of the many honors of working at Town Bank with my Town Bank family is that today as presenting sponsor of the Chamber State of the City is that I have the opportunity to introduce the mayors and several of the cities within our wonderful Hampton Roads region. Each of our leaders throughout the region of their respective city has a commitment to excellence, public service, and a little bit of competitive streak. 
This is a trait that we should all imitate in our daily lives. While contemplating how I should introduce Mayor Linda Johnson today, after reviewing and reflecting upon her extensive personal, professional, and civic bio, which all of you have a copy of today in your program, I simply referred back to Webster's Dictionary. When one meets Mayor Johnson, one immediately thinks of one word, optimism. The definition reads, a tendency to expect the best possible outcome or dwell on the most helpful aspects of the situation, or simply make as perfect or effective as possible. Since becoming Suffolk's first female mayor approximately eight years ago, she has led one of the Commonwealth's fastest growing and diverse cities with an optimistic style that fosters confidence that Suffolk's better days are always on the horizon and that our only limitations are inaction and negativity. This is Mayor Johnson's eighth State of the City address and I am sure that over the weekend she may have been thinking, where has all the time gone? It was only eight years ago when she shared her vision for the, our city to create a vibrant northern Suffolk, a revitalizing downtown and village area, and a transportation system that would properly connect Suffolk and our region to the world's markets. We all can see that the fruits of these efforts as we go about our lives and work on a daily basis. I should note that this progress would not have occurred without a couple of other adjectives, including diligence, flexibility, patience, and dedication, all leadership traits that we hope to see in each of our business and civic leaders here in Hampton Roads. It is my distinct pleasure and honor today on behalf of our Town Bank family and the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce to thank Mayor Johnson for her optimistic leadership and to ask her to the podium to share her thoughts of the state of Suffolk in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, our Mayor, Mayor Johnson. Well, good afternoon. Oh, we can do better than that. Come on, good afternoon. First of all, thank you, Dawn. I don't believe I've ever been introduced in a more lovely way, and I thank you so much for those kind words. Um, I want to start out this morning. I have, I have a lot to tell you this afternoon, so, but we're going we're gonna to get through this very quickly. But as we do, I want to welcome everybody to the city of Suffolk and to the Suffolk state of the city. And before I get started, I, always, I never think to do this, but I'm going to do it today. You know, I could not do what I do or be here today or be optimistic or any of the things that I've just been described as being so, so kindly without the two men in my life, and that is my husband and my son. And I'd ask them to stand. It's Jesse and Jesse J. Johnson III. And my husband is frowning at me right now saying, why did she do that? The Suffolk State of the City is presented by the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of everyone here, I would like to say to all the members of the chamber, thank you so much for what you do each and every day. <laughs> Dedicated to business growth and economic expansion of the Hampton Roads area, we appreciate all of the work the chamber does to promote our region and our community, not just today, but each and every day. I am delighted that you could join us for today's State of the City presentation as we celebrate Suffolk, that is our theme, and the countless reasons we have to applaud the accomplishments not only of this past year, but also in the past decade. It has been said that the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. And the words were never any truer. The achievements and strides we have made in the recent years are unparalleled in the history of our city. I would like to ask that the members of the City Council stand again and be recognized. Very quickly, please. While each holds dear the desires and issues within their own individual boroughs, 
We know that the overarching success and vitality of the entire city and the boundless potential that lies ahead for us all lies in the fact that we work together, even though we might not always agree. Yes, in our work and in our living, we recognize that difference is a reason for celebration and growth rather than a reason for disagreement. I would also like to mention to Vice Mayor Brown, who joins me today on the podium, you know, as this job grows, our city is growing and the demands are growing and there's so many things that we do. And I want to thank him for always being there to just fill in whatever gap is possible. And that's so important. Each day we are building our tomorrow by working together with our local businesses and our citizens. We have the vision, the imagination, the plans and the ability to build a bright future for this city and generations to follow. There is another individual that deserves special recognition today, and that is our city manager, Selena Cuffey Glenn, and I'd ask that she's please stand. Since being sworn in as city manager in 2008, she has helped to guide this city through some of the most challenging and tumultuous economic times in our nation's history. Her record of efficiency, effectiveness, and accountability has proved a strong foundation upon which to continue moving this city forward. With her strong leadership team of experienced, dedicated department heads and their fellow city employees who work tirelessly day in and day out, that's what it takes to make our city great. They, along with their co-workers that couldn't be here today joining us, believe that public service is a noble calling and together they are delivering the highest quality services at the lowest possible cost. Quality and service, they are the benchmarks we continue to use as we celebrate yet another important milestone this year. This is the 40th anniversary of the merger of the cities of Suffolk and Nansman County, a move which on January 1, 1974, forever changed the geography of Hampton Roads, making the city of Suffolk the largest city in the Commonwealth of Virginia in land mass with over 430 square miles. This 40th anniversary has been a welcome opportunity for us to look back at our past through fresh eyes and look forward for a new time of growth and influence. During last year's State of the City event, we laid out for you a blueprint of success. And I can assure you that we are continuing to build on that progress that we've achieved in the recent years. With every individual brick that has been laid at the new combined municipal and E911 call center, we are paving the way for an even brighter future. As this building symbolizes not only how far our city has come, but the strong future that we have in store for us. Opening in early fall, this one-stop shop will allow us to continue to provide efficient, convenient, quality services to our citizens, the what they deserve, combined with the most technologically advanced E91 capabilities currently available all located in this state-of-the-art facility of which we will all be proud. It's a catalyst for redevelopment, additional growth, and private investment in our downtown when these doors open. They will literally be writing another chapter in our rich history. Throughout this presentation, I will highlight for you the reasons why today we celebrate, as you can look around you, we celebrate Suffolk. to celebrate, in other words, to rejoice. Have fun, have a good time. Party, enjoy yourself, revel. Commemorate, observe, mark, keep, remember, honor, praise, acclaim, commend, applaud, hail, sing the praises. However you choose to define celebrate, across Suffolk's 430 square miles over the past 365 days, we've done just that. Like any typical 40-something, we admit we've been fussing over our appearance lately, especially when you consider the facelift currently taking place downtown and in many of our boroughs. A city is only as strong as its physical structure, and it must work well so the community can function. We know that the best way to grow our economy is also the best way to lay the foundation for a strong future, executing on the fundamentals with sound finances and excellent public services. Sharing that same philosophy is Town Bank who has chosen Suffolk as the place to spend millions in capital investment in recent years, and who is also the leader in Virginia in the Small Business Lending Fund. Well, we love this community, obviously, because we have made a tremendous investment right here in North Suffolk, the North Suffolk community. We have invested more than $40 million 
in this community. Um, we have more than 350 employees that call Suffolk home to where they come and work every day. Um, and it's such a convenient place for all of our employees to get to. Whether they're coming from Virginia Beach, the oceanfront, or from the peninsula, they're able to get here and it's very accessible in less than 30 minutes. I've called Suffolk home for 18 years now and I have very, very fond memories of raising my family in Suffolk. The financial strength of Suffolk is solid and continuing to intensify. We're on the doorstep of a AAA rating with all the national agencies due in part to our conservative fiscal policies. They feel that we're indeed moving in the right direction, as does David Rose, the city's financial advisor with Davenport & Company. The other thing I think that's exciting for us is that by virtue of having put our financial house in order, uh, especially during this difficult period nationally, uh, is that we're well positioned as the economy starts to big up steam nationally as well as regionally to really benefit and to be able to put the citizens and the community in a best position, uh, not only for the next several years, but for decades to come. Uh, sustainability is the type of thing that we look at year to year in budgets and we ask ourselves, um, how are we getting the budget balanced? And what we find is that uh, we're doing those things that are not one year wonders, but rather are multi-year uh, success builders. Others see our success too, with CNN Money Magazine recognizing us as one of the top 100 best small cities to live in America just a few short years ago, not to mention the ninth best place to live for jobs. With the second lowest real estate tax rate in the region, no wonder so many people and businesses are choosing to call Suffolk home. So while we're feeling fabulous at 40, Numbers certainly help to tell the story, and Suffolk's growth has in fact outpaced that of our, paced that of our fellow Hampton Roads neighbors from 2000 to 2012. With our population growing by a hefty 34.6% fueled by new development, we now have more than 87,000 residents calling Suffolk home. Numbers also tell us where we have been, as back in 2007 we began coming off of negative comments and bond rating downgrades from our credit rating agencies. Since that time, all of the information has been positive, and we are on the threshold of a triple A rating with all of the national rating agencies. The trend of increasing credit ratings since 2008, which by no coincidence is also the same year as Selena Cuffey Glenn was appointed our city manager, has been estimated to save the city approximately $23 million in debt service costs over the life of our bonds through lower interest rates and on borrowing costs to finance schools, city facilities, utilities, roadways, and the refinancing of old debts. How did we get here, you might ask? Through continued strong financial practices, responsible choices, prudent investments, and a balanced approach to budgeting, and by making the necessary tough choices while still maintaining the high levels of service our citizens deserve and appreciate. Our financial position is sound with an increasingly expanding employment base continued economic growth and strategic diversification. Governor Terry McAuliffe recently touted Virginia's growth in exports and stressed the development of a wide array of industries is more important than ever. That is a belief we have been putting into practice now for quite some time. According to the Virginia Port Authority, the Port of Hampton Roads has reason to celebrate as last year was the biggest ever for container volume and rail cargo in Virginia. Here in Suffolk and in other locations, we will also reap the benefits after a U.S. Department of Commerce board modified the regional foreign trade zone. Location is a key for our continued growth. Our proximity to the Port of Virginia, easy access to expanding rail and road hubs, closeness to the mid-Atlantic coast solidifies the fact that we are strategically positioned to continue to attract companies from the U.S. and abroad, looking to expand or establish their operations. In Suffolk, they have room to grow and can benefit from a skilled and diversified workforce. The 2013 Economic Activity Report you will find in the gift bag at your table confirms that the closer you look, the better we get. One of the many companies celebrating major anniversaries this year is Unilever Lipton, who has grown with us now for 50 years. When they needed to revamp their tea operation, they considered relocating the plant out of state, perhaps even out of country. 
But when we met with their officials and reminded them of everything that Suffolk has to offer, they decided to stay and invest over $96 million over the next several years to upgrade their facility. Perhaps one of the most notable celebrations of 2013 was the 100-year anniversary of Planters Peanuts. Founded by Amadea Obici, the company celebrated their centennial with community events, a special proclamation, and a visit with the iconic Mr. Peanut, who I might add also received just a tiny facelift. You could say we are certainly nuts about Suffolk, as Birdsong Peanuts, another successful manufacturing company with family ties deeply rooted into the rich Suffolk soil, will also celebrate their 100th anniversary this year. Why have so many thriving, successful businesses decided to call Suffolk home over the years? For the exact same reason so many people have chosen to make Suffolk their home. Our unique charm, our desirable location, and yes, our southern hospitality. The welcome mat is officially out, and whether you're a first-time buyer or you're looking for your dream home, we've got you covered. Suffolk has a multitude of options available from affordable single-family housing to luxury apartments, condominiums, eclectic downtown living, rural farmettes, or retirement cottages. Sprinkled in the mix are historic homes, family-friendly established neighborhoods, and the finest in country living. You'll find it all in Suffolk. Let's hear why one of Hampton Road's premier home builders for over 30 years finds Suffolk so special. We have found in the years that we've worked with Suffolk that they are truly open for business. They are a city that has worked with us throughout not only this community, but other communities that we've built in, where we've worked almost as a partnership in coming up with something that works for us as a business person, as well as the leaders of Suffolk are always looking out for the welfare of the citizens of Suffolk as well. And we've been able to work it out where it's been a win-win situation. Suffolk was the only non-Northern Virginia city ranked in the top 10 cities in Virginia recently by Movoto, an online real estate resource. Our ranking was based on factors including amenities, cost of living, and diversity, to name a few. Making the dream of home ownership real for a number of Suffolk families is Habitat for Humanity, who has partnered with Suffolk for most of their 25 years. We've actually built more homes in Suffolk than any of other towns. Uh, we've already completed 40 homes here in Suffolk, including 16 the Sweet 16 back in 2008. Suffolk is a great place for our families. Uh, as you may know, it's the, the largest growing city in this region. You also have the second lowest taxes in the region. It's a good place for families to be. Because it's growing, our families also have opportunities for jobs and careers. So we're delighted with the city. Um, people in Suffolk have treated us really well. We're happy to come back and do this project. Helping to redefine and continue to revitalize a downtown landscape, not to mention filling the desire for diverse, stylish urban living, are the continuing efforts of Monument Construction. Their $8.8 .8 million overhaul has given an entire historic city block new life and will be providing close to 70 sophisticated loft apartments along with approximately 6,000 square feet of ground floor retail space. Combined with the $24 million, 150,000 square foot municipal and E911 center currently under construction, the expansions and improvements in this corridor will continue to be the catalyst for future growth and development. As most of you know, I'm a realtor, have been for 28 years, and you hear me say all the time, location, location, location. But as the mayor of this wonderful city, I know that factor combined with so many others is the real reason that we continue to rank as one of Hampton Roads' fastest growing cities. No matter your taste or your budget, when it comes to where you lay your head each night, we truly do have something for everyone. The Bainbridge Hampton Roads Crossing Luxury Apartment Complex has added more options for our current and new residents, with highly sought after features including a 24-hour fitness center, pool, cyber cafe, bistro lounge, and off-leash dog park. The Terry Peterson Company's developer of Hampton Roads Crossing also plans a new 100,000 square foot shopping center that will be attached to the Kroger Marketplace, soon to be built off of College Drive, further adding to the retail choices for our citizens. To quote these developers, they selected Suffolk because of the exciting growth in our area. And talk about exciting. I am just thrilled today to announce that this fall, the Tidewater Builders Association will be teaming up with Sasser Construction 
as a presenting sponsor will be Town Bank to once again highlight one of Suffolk's premier communities, the waterfront at Porks, Porks, Parkside. Yes, that will be the host of Homorama 2014. This will be Suffolk's fourth Homorama. Sentara is on board as a sponsor as well and will focus on health and wellness at this regional family favorite event. State-of-the-art senior living is also on the horizon with the crossings at Harborview, a $24 million development that will include independent and assisted living as well as memory care. Selected due to its quiet surroundings but also for its proximity to area amenities, the facility will provide a realm of housing and care for seniors that choose to remain in the community they have called home for their entire life. A house is made of walls and beams, but a home is made of love and dreams. And Habitat for Humanity has made that dream come true for countless families in Suffolk over the years. We saw Reverend Wayne Lavender in the video and we are delighted that he could join us here today. Reverend Lavender, would you please stand and be recognized for all of your contributions to our city. Thank you for giving the hearts a place to call home. Another important factor in deciding where you call home is the quality of the schools. We all share the belief that every child needs a chance to succeed. Join me as the classroom as we look at education in Suffolk. Intelligent and motivated, thoughtful and accomplished, selfless and inspiring. These are among the attributes of upcoming graduates from Suffolk's public and private high schools. Let's hear directly from them as they share the experiences and opportunities that have shaped their lives and helped to define their futures. Quality education is what allows you to make your own decisions in life. It's what allows you to take control of your life. When you are educated, you don't have to depend on other individuals to kind of tell you what to do. Instead, you can form your own conclusions, you can form your own opinions and then you can act on those. And so it just increases your independence. It allows you to take advantage of the freedoms that we have in the society. And that's why it's just important to get a quality education. I think the quality of education is important because you know it gives you the opportunity to do well in the future. Um, it sets you up for, it gives you the option to pursue the best careers and be surrounded by the best people um, that push you to be the best you can be, um, you know, who, they want you to do well and I think a good education gives you that opportunity um, for success in the future you know whether it's college, jobs, um, anything you know in the future. So. In the city of Suffolk I received a fantastic quality of education. It was very diverse you know they give you all types of different programs you can get in such as the IB program, dual credit, honors courses, all of that. It was fantastic and it also prepared me to get ready to further my education in college and I plan to attend George Mason group thank you. Alrighty and it was just if I could redo it I would. It was just that great. I think it's important because it helps produce quality members of the society and the community. I think it makes it special that it's a really great blend of city and um, country and you have that big city feel but you also have your little hometown country feel also. The quality education is important because education it, it's our foundation for the future. If you don't have sound education then you can't progress on to have a good career, a good job, or just to become a contributing member of society. We're extremely proud of all Suffolk schools in this year's class of seniors. They've achieved for all the right reasons, parental and community support, high standards and accountability, commitment and dedication, high expectations and quality teachers, including 2014 Citywide Teacher of the Year, Audrey Casaza of Kings Fork Middle School. Well, Suffolk to me is here at Kings Fork Middle School. And when I walk into the building, I just walk in here with a smile. Coming here every day feels like home. The faculty is wonderful, the administration is wonderful, and I consider my students my children. Whether they're off to college, joining the workforce, or entering the military, we know Suffolk students are ready for the challenges that await them. Access to quality education for all age groups 
is one of the most important facets of a well-rounded community. I would like to recognize the students featured in today's video, for they are truly the future of this great city. And I'd ask that those with us please stand. Please also show your appreciation for Suffolk's Teacher of the Year, Audrey Kazaza, and I would ask that she stand and be recognized. As Dr. Whitney shared with us at the recent State of the Schools event, city schools are strong but are working to be better and have once again received district accreditation from Advanced Ed, the most rigorous school accreditation organization in the United States. Not only are our schools preparing our students for the future, but they're also helping to ensure that they become good stewards in the community, as this year marks the first that high schoolers must com complete a community service requirement to graduate. Through continuing city initiatives, such as our Suffolk Office on Youth and Suffolk Youth Advisory Council, we are ensuring that our youth have a voice in their community and the skills needed to become the civic leaders of tomorrow. After being on the books for years, the new state-of-the-art Pioneer Elementary School, replacing the older Southwestern and Robertson Elementary Schools, will be opening the start of the 2014-15 school year and will serve 650 students from pre-K through the fifth grade. Make no mistake about it, education is and always has been a priority for this council and this city. So much so, in fact, that we have designated 51% of this year's budget to education and related debt. Add that to the fact that over the last 10 years, the city's contribution to schools through operating funds, capital projects, from replacing schools, school renovation projects, and more, have been almost a half a billion dollars. And it's clear that we do indeed value education. Also meeting a need in one of our city's fastest growing industries is a class offered by Paul D. Camp Community College in partnership with Amatis Industries, focusing on warehousing and distribution. With hands-on training and certification, this collaboration will ensure that we continue to provide the highly trained individuals to support this flourishing industry. With outstanding schools, an experienced labor force, and excellent workforce development programs among the many factors luring businesses to Suffolk. Our quality of life is one of the many reasons that people decide to stay here, which is certainly a cause for celebration. Take a look with me. The quality of life in Suffolk is only surpassed by the quality of our citizens, which is evident to anyone that has met or been touched by the giving heart of one of our local business owners, Leotis Williams, who for years now has been adding to the blessings thousands celebrate during the holidays. Suffolk is home. You know, what better place to, to make an impact than right here at home, in, in your own backyard. You know, and Suffolk, even though Suffolk is growing, Suffolk still gives you that small town feeling, you know, that everybody knows everyone and, you know, and I, I just want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in people's lives. And the best place to start is here at home. We're that unique mix of having all of the features of a larger city, but we're still small enough that you can feel a part of the community. We can also rejoice in the fact that all of life's amenities and necessities are nearby, and medical care here is second to none with the vast number of healthcare choices now available in our city. In fact, Centera Healthcare marked their 125th anniversary this year with their publication titled, Celebrating the Past, Creating the Future. When we talk about quality of life, public safety is right at the top of everyone's list, and rightfully so. In fact, Suffolk is home to the finest law enforcement and fire safety professionals imaginable. Nowhere is their commitment to their community and the citizens they serve more evident than in our national night out celebrations. This unique event continues to bring neighborhoods together to build a sense of community. And for the eighth straight year, Suffolk was recognized as one of the top five cities in the country in our population category in this national going away party for crime. The Youth Public Safety Academy is another opportunity where officers and firefighters interact with our youth, teaching at-risk youth about public safety and how to make positive life choices. This past summer also marked another momentous and historic celebration when after years of discussion, a ceremonial signing was held at Lone Star Lakes Lodge to transfer land from the city of Suffolk to the Nansman Indian Tribal Association. Historic is an apt description. 
for you can count on one hand in the history of America that a municipal government has returned native land in recognition of and to give voice to a uniquely American people. Marking the beginning of the development of Madinock Town, a replica 17th century Indian village and cultural center, their history and culture can now be shared with future generations. Speaking of sharing, there's nothing like sharing a delicious meal with friends and family, and Suffolk has a vast array of restaurants to suit any taste or budget, including downtown's award-winning Harper's Table, named a winner of the Open Table Diner's Choices Awards for the top 100 restaurants in the United States that specialize in American cuisine. Finding inspiration from our local farms, they're serving up dishes that reflect both time and place in our national culture, changing our culinary landscape. In today's increasingly digital world, the role of our libraries are also changing, and they're now considered not only a place of learning, but also a community and cultural center and more important in society than ever before. The new downtown library will certainly fill that void. We really feel like the library is essential because it provides the only place in the community where people of all ages can come, they can collaborate, it can really be a catalyst for people with their creative ideas to not only foster them but to also stimulate those and hopefully to provide new ideas and experiences for those people and for the community as a whole. It was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow that said, the love of learning, the sequestered nooks, and all the sweet serenity of books. As an avid reader and lover of books, and not to mention a former public teacher, I certainly look forward to the construction of the new downtown library, which has been deferred for a number of years in order to advance other capital projects, such as school and public safety buildings. With possible collaboration with Paul D. Camp Community College as a place for higher education as well, this library will be more than a building to house books. It will be an icon that emb embodies Suffolk's commitment to learning and the future, and it will forever change the downtown streetscape and breathe even more energy into this exciting, evolving corridor. Our quality of life is dependent upon our ability to get from place to place, and we know that our economy cannot grow if we cannot move our people, trucks, or goods. Transportation challenges have been an issue we have all faced for more years than I would care to count. However, with the establishment of the new Hampton Roads Transportation Accountability Commission, or HTAC, we can work together to improve conditions across our region and ensure that the best interests of localities are represented and that our citizens are getting the most out of their hard-earned dollars. I would like to mention again that we have with us this afternoon Delegate Chris Jones, who was very, very significant in this piece of legislation, and Senator Crosgrove, we thank you so much for being here too. Thanks for everything you do in Richmond. And we in Hampton Roads promise that we will do our very best. When we talk about a return on investment, we need to look no further than the life-saving joint force simulation and training solutions at the joint staff in Suffolk and the tactical cyber defense that protects the Navy's assets at Navy Cyber Forces also here in Suffolk. They will also create a new command at this location, the Information Dominance Forces Command, or TICOM, by October 1, 2014. This command will have supporting relationships with the entire Navy. Information dominance and cyber defense will be a focus point for all of the naval operations, be it on sea, air, land, or space. And it will be managed right here in our city of Suffolk. We're extremely proud of the work being accomplished here as it not only expands our society's prosperity, it advances the world's technology, and most importantly, it saves lives today and into the future. I would ask that the members of our armed forces, active duty or retired, join today as we can give you the appreciation you deserve. Don't be bashful, please stand. I know we have, there we go, thank you. Please accept our sincere, sincere gratitude for not only your service and your sacrifice, but also for what you do each and every day for our freedom. We cannot speak about service and sacrifice without also recognizing our public safety professionals, and I would ask that all of those here today please join us by standing. Don't be bashful.
It has been said that government's first duty and highest obligation is public safety. And this council feels strongly that that commitment be invested with over $47 million for public safety expansions, upgrades, renovations, and new construction over the last 10 years. That doesn't mean anything without the men and women that just stood up. We give them what they need to do their job, but they do it from their hearts every day, and we thank you. Suffolk's public servants are dedicated to improving and protecting the quality of life for everyone. They are men and women of honor and courage, and we sincerely thank them for the sacrifices that not only they, but their families make day in and day out to keep our city safe and to let us go about our day not even giving it a second thought. The word family brings a particular individual to mind, and that is the local business owner, Leotis Williams, who you heard from in the video. Leotis, would you please stand for a moment? I know you're here. Over the past 10 years, Leotis has provided over 14,000 turkeys to deserving families in Suffolk to brighten their holiday celebrations. Leotis, we cannot thank you enough for caring about your community and making such a difference. If you've never had the opportunity to be with him on that special Saturday, please try to come out and do it. It's something you'll never forget. Another individual who's been giving back to Suffolk for decades is also this year's recipient of the Rotary Club's First Citizen Award, Bobby Harrell. And I'm not sure that Bobby could be with us today. I don't believe he is. If he is, please stand. But he's a member of countless boards and commissions throughout Hampton Roads over the years, and he is truly, anybody that knows him, a fundraiser extraordinaire. Bobby's latest endeavor as Capital Campaign Chairman for the Salvation Army's newly aptly named Robert W. Harrell Jr. Physical Health and Education Center on Bank Street will be a lasting legacy. The center was designed around needs in the community and offers an athletics program for youth and adults, a computer program aiding in computer literacy, and a senior program providing exercise opportunities, just to name a few. I am proud to say that the city was recognized the benefits of the center and provided an additional $40,000 contribution to this center. This is something that will always be a reminder of Bobby Harrell, and we congratulate him today. Healthcare benefits and options for our citizens also keep growing with new diagnostic offerings at Centera Bell Harbor, the expansion of the Lifetime Women's Health and Wellness Clinic, the introduction of a 3D mammography technology at the Bon Secours Health Center at Harborview, the newly constructed Now Care Urgent Care and Lakeview Family Medicine Office on Godwin Boulevard, and another new Harborview Medical Office building destined to enhance the health offerings already in that area. This is just to name a few. There were smiles for miles this year when hundreds got free dental help from volunteers with the Virginia Dental Association Foundation's Mission of Mercy that was held in March. We hope to see that again. It was an amazing event. The growth in healthcare, physical facilities, and services has immensely added not only to the condition of our life, but the quality of our life. Our greatest asset is our people. Join us in the effort to develop a healthy workforce. In your takeaway bag today, you will find a copy of the Healthy People, Healthy Suffolk Comprehensive Roadmap. Take a look at it and join us as we all try to make Suffolk a healthier place. I'd like to thank the Obesey Foundation for all that they do in that endeavor. The colorful, energetic celebration enjoyed by hundreds last summer during the deed signing ceremony for Mattanock Town is one event that I will never, ever forget. Native Americans have played a vital role in shaping our nation's history and culture, and their many contributions have enhanced the freedom, prosperity, and greatness of our country. With Mattanock Town, the Nansman Indian tribe's unique spiritual and artistic contributions, together with their exciting customs and celebrations, will continue to enhance our quality of life and be a wonderful destination for those looking to explore Native American history. You can also explore your taste buds here. With an ever-expanding array of restaurants to choose from, including Vintage Tavern, recently named in the Food Lover's Guide to Virginia as one of the 30 places to eat in Virginia before you die. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I think that sounds like a great bucket list item. <clears throat> 
Whether exploring our quaint villages or our city's rich history and heritage, our nation, nature lover's paradise and amazing parks, our 8,000 acres of pristine lakes and miles of riverfront, or our ever-evolving cultural arts programs that add to our quality of life, we truly do offer the best of both worlds, small town charm and hospitality in the midst of cutting edge technology and innovation. Leisure can be described as the empty hours in our lives we need so we have the time to create and dream, and culture as the widening of the mind and the spirit. No matter how you choose to define the two, combined, they're an unbeatable pair. The business of arts, recreation, culture, and creativity help define our city, contributes to our economy, and brings our citizens together. Nowhere is that special spirit more evident than in the annual Suffolk Peanut Festival, considered one of America's top 50 festivals. People come to the Peanut Fest because they enjoy the outdoors. It's a time to listen to live entertainment. People love the demolition derby. The kids love the carnival. And who doesn't love to eat some of the festival food, like a corn dog, funnel cake, and you know, people love the shrimp feast too. It's just a time to get out and have a good time. Carnival food favorites aside, another culinary delight is the Taste of Suffolk event, a street festival which brings thousands downtown to revel in delectable offerings from countless restaurants not to mention musical entertainment and family fun stretching several city blocks. Whether you're a lover of festivals, history, wildlife, the arts, or recreation, there's something for everyone in Suffolk. Parks and Recreation provides for communities opportunities for enhancing their quality of life through health, fitness, nutrition, and socialization. Citizens have the opportunity to be happy and a chance to burn off that energy in a positive manner. So what we do, we provide opportunities for people just to live healthy, happy, and active. The health of a community can be measured in many ways, and the City of Suffolk strives to provide outlets for citizens to be able to live healthier lives. The Wellyville Community Center saw a construction kickoff last fall. The former Robertson Elementary School will provide greatly anticipated amenities including a fitness center, game room, computer center, multi-purpose rooms, locker rooms, and administrative offices, and is scheduled to open later this year. Recreational opportunities abound, and Suffolk is home to some of the region's most beautiful parks and glistening waterways. Among the many acres of parks available to choose from, Suffolk is home to four regional parks that are truly a jewel in Suffolk's crown. Lone Star Lakes, Bennett's Creek Park, Sleepy Hole Park, and Constance Wharf Park and Marina all lend themselves to unique, yet great, outdoor fun and activities. Home to a series of the summer's TGIF concerts, not to mention the 4th of July Stars and Stripes Spectacular, and numerous 5K walks and runs and other community events, Constance Wharf Park and Marina is a destination in itself, allowing guests at the lovely Hilton Garden Inn Suffolk Riverfront to enjoy cool summer breezes off the river and breathtakingly beautiful sunsets from their brick veranda and luscious grounds. An additional 21 community parks, the wonderfully restored East Suffolk Recreation Center, which by the way this year celebrates their fifth anniversary of serving our citizens, six joint use recreation centers and two skate spots ensure opportunities for all to get out and get active. With recreational opportunities including fishing, hiking, volleyball, disc golf, skateboarding, canoeing, archery, horseshoes, biking, geocaching, and more, the sky's the limit. That term is appropriate as thousands take to the skies over Suffolk annually enjoying the adrenaline rush from Skydive Suffolk. In Suffolk, you can also heed the call of the wild, as there's nothing quite like a visit to the Great Dismal Swamp National Wildlife Refuge to put you in tune with nature. Whether you take advantage of one of Suffolk Tourism's narrated bus tours or venture out on your own, the tranquil stillness and majestic beauty of the refuge is a must-see, no matter what the season is. The Suffolk Center for Cultural Arts is a true community arts center, featuring musical acts, plays, workshops, and camps, all with a local flair. But it's also much more, offering citizens the opportunity to experience world-class performances as actors, entertainers, musicians, and dancers grace their stage, and works by visual artists enhance their gallery space. They invite everyone to join them to make new memories. New memories are among many of the benefits you'll also gain by visiting the Suffolk Art Gallery, Partnerships with Suffolk Parks and Recreation, the Suffolk Art League and the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts enable year-round programming, exciting and educational classes and workshops, along with annual events and lectures sure to get everyone talking. It's obvious Suffolk truly does offer something for everyone, and there's no better time to explore, make memories, and share your adventures with family and friends.
every month and every season brings a new occasion to celebrate this wonderfully rich, beautiful, diverse city we call home. As you saw in the video, one of our most popular events is the annual Taste of Suffolk. The brainchild of Councilman Charles Parr, his vision was to inspire and engage the downtown businesses and citizens of the greater communities to support each other through service and patronage in a street festival, and it just keeps growing every year. Soon to celebrate an official grand opening is the long-awaited dog park at Lake Mead Park. This facility will provide multi-generational recreation and is a wonderful complement to the existing playground, skate park, walking trails, and the adjacent Howard Mast tennis courts. Additional opportunities to enjoy our waterways will soon be available with canoe and kayak launches at Constance Wharf and Sleepy Hole Park, which will also include a new fishing pier. I'm also pleased to say that both of these projects received grant funding, which makes them an even greater bonus for our citizens. Another project primarily infused by grant funding is the Suffolk Seaboard Trail. Spanning from downtown Suffolk all the way to the Chesapeake City Line, the trail will provide stunning views and amazing hikes and biking opportunities for outdoor enthusiasts. In fact, in fiscal year 2013 alone, our staff has researched and secured $1.5 million in grants to help fund much needed projects while keeping our taxes and fees low. The new Whaleville Recreation Center opening later this year will be a welcome addition to the community and will be a destination for all ages seeking not only athletic enrichment, but a social destination and a meeting place. With a donation of $250,000 from the Obesey Healthcare Foundation for exercise equipment, visitors to the center will surely get their workout. On the horizon also is a new Bennett's Creek Rec Center that will complement the Joyce Use Recreation Center at Creekside Elementary School. This facility will include a fitness room, multi-use spaces, game room, computer room, and athletic fields in the fastest growing and most populated area of the city. A win-win for the city in a land swap with the U.S. Army, construction costs will be greatly reduced due to the limited renovations needed to this existing impressive structurally sound building that already sits on that property. Yes, Suffolk does offer something for everyone with an ever-widening array of activities and attractions. Our arts and culture scenes has developed into the perfect blend of local, regional, and national artisans through visual arts, theater, dance, music, and more. With five golf courses, boating, fishing, and kayaking, not to mention historic sites, guided historic tours, boutique shopping, and unique eateries, it is evident that we are serious about having fun in Suffolk. But we are equally as serious about economic development. From small startup businesses to Fortune 500 companies, Suffolk rolls out the red carpet to meet their needs. We've talked about our close proximity to the Port of Virginia and our easy access to improving transportation routes. But when you add to that the mix of our availability of land, skilled labor force, and an enviable quality of life, it's easy to see why Suffolk is a destination for companies from the U.S. and abroad looking to grow and establish their operations. Watch with me now as we hear from our Economic Development Director, Kevin Hughes, as we feature our new and expanding businesses. As the largest city in the state, Suffolk has a true unique opportunity to create a diverse industry, to create job opportunities for all of our citizens. We are able to develop a very aggressive economic development strategy that's really team focused. It starts with the Suffolk City Council, City Administration, and the Suffolk Economic Development Authority, following all the way down to the Suffolk staff. This team environment creates a great welcoming location for new business development, as well as our existing industry to grow and thrive.
I sat down because when I was practicing my speech, it was all I could do not to dance during that, so I figured I'd, I'd, you, you don't want to see that. Um, Kevin Hughes, would you and your amazing staff please stand so we can recognize and thank you for all that you do to promote our city. I think it's worth noting that that's a very small department that fills such huge shoes. And I think we need to remember that in the last year since Kevin became our economic development director, these were times when our real estate assessments were going down, when the world was kind of turning upside down, when businesses were not doing well, and yet he has built our city with his team, and we cannot say thank you enough. True to the adage that the numbers say it all in 2013, the city of Suffolk posted another stellar year. With 85 new and expanding businesses bringing 650 new jobs and more than $93,863,500 in new capital investment. That includes just under a million additional square feet in expansions and new businesses to the economic development portfolio. You will find that information and much more in the economic activity report making its official debut in your package today. While the numbers are impressive and worthy of celebration, keep in mind that numbers are not reflective of the human component that the impact of a job means to an individual and their family and their ability to lead a successful life. Included in the numbers of expanding businesses was Unilever Lipton Tea, which we talked about them revamping their tea operations and when they were considering another relocation. By staying in Suffolk, more than 300 employees remain at the largest tea producing facility in the United States. Whether you prefer a cup of tea or a mug of coffee, you might say that Suffolk is the caffeine capital of the United States. I'm thrilled to share with you today the fact that Massimo Zanetti Beverage, one of the nation's largest coffee roasters, has announced plans to begin producing their latest beverage product called Pods at their manufacturing facility in Wilroy Industrial Park. The single serve coffee pods are the newest addition to Massimo Zanetti's extensive coffee and beverage line. These pods can be used in any single serve brewing machines and are designed to offer convenience, yet not sacrificing any of the quality and taste to which their customers have grown accustomed. You can savor the flavor of the new $4 million investment with a sample in your gift bag today. Another coffee giant in Wilroy Industrial Park making a major announcement today is J.M. Smucker Company. With their proposed 13,000 square foot expansion of their whole roast receiving project and as part of the plant's business continuity plan, which provides the ability to receive whole roasted coffee in super sacks. This expansion will also provide the ability to receive additional Folger blends. Take a whiff of the delectable aroma of fresh coffee as you drive down Route 58 at the Nansman Parkway overpass, and I think you'll agree with me that we have grounds to claim that we are the caffeine capital. Another major announcement to share with you today is the construction of a 90-room, 56,000-square-foot Hampton Inn Hotel located at Centerbrook at Godwin Boulevard and Route 58 Bypass. With a completion date of the summer of 2015, we are delighted that Shameen Hotels has decided to come and grow with us. We are also anxiously awaiting the construction of the Kroger Marketplace in North Suffolk, an approximately $22 million investment, which is also spurring additional retail interest and investment in that corridor. The entrepreneurial spirit is certainly alive and well here, and Love Local by Suffolk campaign continues to make a difference with our small businesses. Without a doubt, small businesses are the backbone of creativity and production in America. Please join me in recognizing the recently announced Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce's Suffolk Small Business of the Year, Elizabeth River Landscape Management. We all know the importance of the warehousing industry to our economy, and I'm proud to officially announce today that Suffolk's very own ACE Import Redistribution Center will host the first ever Hampton Roads Logistic Games to be held on Friday, June 6th. This friendly competition will pit prominent companies in the region against one another in games designed to stress teamwork, talent, efficiency, and speed of each competing company, and challenges including a pallet puzzle sprint, and a box put, among other exciting contests. 
The net proceeds generated from this event will benefit the Paul D. Camp Community College Foundation and provide scholarship opportunities for those wishing to enter the logistics field. In Suffolk, it is obvious that we are not defined by our limits, but only by our potential. We have had a long journey to get where we stand today, and we have seen our share of change and transformation. But we know that the best lies ahead, and we are poised to further expand our reputation as the trailblazer of innovation and advancement in this region. As our population continues to grow, so does our business community, while already thriving. The opportunities for continued expansion are seen all around us. We are constantly striving to find new ways to accelerate growth so that every community in our city can be touched with this success. In closing, celebrating the city is something that I do every day. Like a firecracker, starting with the smallest of sparks, Suffolk has ignited into a flourishing display of progress. We're moving forward in an intentional and balanced way building on an economy that is strong and ensuring an enhanced quality of life that is safe, vibrant, and diverse for all of our citizens. Take a look around you as you leave. We have come so far, and our future is as bright as our determination is strong. So if you would please join me by raising your glass and standing. I'd ask that we make a toast. Here's to celebrating life in Suffolk. Here's to celebrating the future of this great city and to celebrating all good things to come. Here's to you, Suffolk. Thank you and God bless.